<clears throat> My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, being a Muslim as a minority in this country or in the West in general, we face many challenges on a daily basis to ourselves, to our children, to the youth. Many challenges arise. And one of those challenges is how to prevent harm reaching our children. I am not talking about bodily harm, physical harm, but harm in terms of haram that we see around us, fitna that we see around us. How can we prevent this from reaching our children? Because our children who go to school, go for education, they will be seeing all sorts of things around them, activities that their friends are taking play, taking part in. The majority being whom? The non-Muslims. The activities and the festivals that they are doing. And not knowing, why am I not allowed to do this? Santa is coming to their schools. Christmas lights, they're decorating their schools. Even at workplaces, at these stages, people say one to one another, Merry Christmas. And us Muslims, we feel we have to fit in. This is the elder generation, we have to fit in, so we will also say Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Our children have no idea what's going on, they just want to partake. <coughs> And they will see houses lit up and they will look so nice, they also want their houses to be lit up. They will see a Christmas tree and say, my friend has one, why can I not have one? And this is why we see parents tackle these situations in different manners. Some will be very extreme. They will shout at their child. Some will try to teach their child. Others will say, you know what? We will also get a Christmas tree because it's the birth of Jesus. Because we are celebrating the birthday of Jesus, we will also get a Christmas tree. We will also celebrate this day. We will also light up our houses. We will also give gifts on the 25th of December. And this has become a common norm amongst us that many of us are starting to fall into this saying Merry Christmas to one another, giving cards to one another, giving gifts to one another, and also to the extent where we are lighting our own houses up. Just for what? So we can fit in with the rest of the people. Just so we don't look like the black sheep on the side. Those that say we are doing it out of the love of Jesus, so this is why we are going to celebrate his birthday. You see, even in our Muslim community, we have people who say the same. We love the Prophet Sallallahu so we are going to celebrate his birthday. But when we look at the origins, where did this come about from? If we look at the celebration of the Prophet Sallallahu we see that it was the Shias who began this. And they began it as mourning the death of the Prophet ﷺ on 12th of Rabi al Awwal. And then over time we gave, why are we mourning for? We shall be celebrated and rejoicing. But this came from nowhere. It wasn't done before. It came that some people decided that they want to celebrate. <coughs> so now that we want to celebrate and partake in this, yes, we love Isa. A. We will not be true believers if we do not believe in Isa alayhi salam. We will not be Muslim. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Isa alayhi salam on this earth with a sharia, with a governing body. And he told the people and, brought, and told them about the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he was raised to the heaven. And then he will return at the time of the Jal in Mahdi. We believe this and we hold firm to this. And he will go in on this earth with justice. This is a part of our Iman. But this does not give us justification. This does not allow us to then celebrate his birthday. Or imitate the kuffar in what they do. The Prophet ﷺ, he says in a hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar, عنه, 
man tashabbaha bi qawmin fa huwa minhum that whoever imitates a nation or a group of people then he is from them and one thing i want to mention here is when we are talking about imitating some will say imitation is everything that the kuffar will do that the non muslims do so the way they dress the way they talk you imitate anything this is wrong but in my opinion this is a very extreme opinion it is those matters that relate to religion for example if a non muslim wore a hat that you liked and you want you to copy the same hat you are imitating him but you have nothing to do with religion so this is fine but if you were to copy or imitate the clothes of for example a goth because the goth believe in devil worship and if you were to copy their clothing then this falls into this category of imitating the non muslim and then you become one of them meaning it is haram upon you so following anything when it comes to religion matters religious matters and this what we are doing now is following the non muslim the christian by celebrating christmas the way they do it we are falling into this imitation the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that a time will come you will follow those before you hand span by hand span cubit by cubit to the extent that if they were to go into the hall of the a lizard you will also go into that hall of the lizard and we are seeing this today we are blind following the culture of the west the way the west is telling us to behave we are behaving you see we hear many times people saying islam over culture reason being they don't want the desi culture the pakistani culture the bengali culture too backwards too extreme but we have adopted the western culture the modern culture is still in to our lives like it is normal this is also a culture that we are living by which goes against the essence of islam celebrating these festivals and partaking within them is going against islam but there is why you being too extreme it is only they are only children let them play with their friends let them partake it's fine nowadays i see at work i was seeing people wearing jumpers with reindeers on muslims This is the extent that is come to. Muslim the big beer spray five times and they go and say merry christmas. Learn the religion. It's not hard. These are the very basics of our religion. If we believe in the tawhid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these two we should know. We shouldn't be going around saying merry christmas. So in the fact what we saying, if it is the birth of Jesus we are saying This birth of the, the day of birth of Jesus have a good one celebrate it i'm with you i'm happy for you by saying merry christmas we are partaking with them these are just words where you think might be minute maybe nothing but in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it could be a word that takes you from jannah to jahannam <coughs> So today when we say 25th of December the people start coming forward and saying there's not much space in the back <coughs> So when we say 25th of December the Christians will say it is the birth of Jesus Christ But in reality if we were to look at the day of to, uh, the 25th of December we will see that it has nothing to do with Christianity it has nothing to do with the birth of Isa alayhi salam and first you can see this by the Quran itself when Maryam alayhi salam was going through labor pain and she was going through difficulty what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say wa huzzi ilayki bi jiz'i an-nakhla tusaqit alayki rutban janiya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered her to shake the date palm tree she shook the date palm tree and dry dates fell from it and in the time of winter in the time of december dry dates falling from a tree were impossible because they needed heat they needed a hot climate 
This is the first sign showing that Isa a.s. was not born in December. And also when we look at the Bible, they say that the night before Isa a.s. was born, the shepherds, they would let their flock go out in the day and they would bring them in at night. And in the time of winter, this was unheard of, it was impossible to allow your flock, your sheep to be out until night. Showing that Isa alayhi salam was born in the months of heat. When were those months? Allah wa'ala. But it was not the month of December. So the question arises, where did 25th of December come from? How did it become a festival that the Christians are partaking in? The Eastern European countries, sorry, the Northern European countries, many of them, after 21st of December, would suffer from no light, <coughs> leading to many people dying. It would be cold, there would be no light, and people would die. And then the moment they would get some sun, they would start to worship their false gods, the sun. These are who worshippers of the sun. So they will worship the sun, thanking the sun that they have given them some light. And this they said would usually occur on the 25th of December. And the Romans on the 25th of December would have a celebration called Saturnalia, where they will worship their son called Saturn on this day, 25th of December. And on the 25th of December, <coughs> They would gather around and give gifts to one another. They would make Satan dua to their son, to their God. And they would see that out in this winter period that all the trees are dying except this one fir tree. So what they would do, they would cut this fir tree and they would bring it to their homes. They would decorate, put lights on it and put apples on it. And today those apples, what do we see as? Those round balls, the red, white and blue balls. They will put light around, they will put lights on their home. They will cut parts of the tree and put it on their doors. Because they felt that this tree was going to give them barakah. They felt this tree was a source of peace for them. They felt that this tree was going to bring ease to their life and comfort to their life. And why is this tree? The Christmas tree that we see today. Look at the origins where it comes from. Today when we look at it, we are thinking it is just a festival that they are doing. That maybe they just started a couple of years ago. But look at the origin. When did they begin? All the centuries before Isa alayhi salam was even a messenger. Centuries before. So this is how it began, 25th of December, as a Roman pagan <coughs> festival. So one asked the question, how did it come to this, uh, the Christianity? How did they adopt this? Because Christians were against this festival. The Church of England <coughs> had banned this festival up until the year 1647. People, Christians, were not allowed to partake in this. 400 years roughly after Isa alayhi salam was raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Christian missionaries what they would do they would go and give da'wah just like we show you they would you go and give da'wah to the people they would go and give da'wah what would happen is the Romans would capture these priests or Christians wherever they would find them and one pleasure they would take out capturing was they would throw these captives to lions and tigers and watch them get eaten alive. So what happened was when these missionaries were caught three, four hundred years after Isa alayhi salam was raised, they asked or they were in that situation that they wanted to get out of captivity. So they said to the Romans that let's come to an agreement. We'll accept some of your festivals. So what happened, the line between Christianity and paganism. So the people of Shirk came to the point where it was blurred. Because the common folk, what we see today, we will listen to the guy delivering the speech 
or the khutbah and we'll feel oh he's correct on what he said we won't go back and we won't go research what he has said but we will take it blind eyed, eyed and we'll say he is correct on what he said and we're going to follow him so when these christian missionaries these priests told the christians that we are adopted that 25th of december is our festival 25th of December, we are going to rejoice and celebrate. The Christians were ready to celebrate because they had no knowledge of their religion. They followed what these priests said. So what happened was 25th of December, they adopted this festival because they made a change. From being the worship of the sun, being Shams, to the worship of the son of God. They changed the word son from Shams to Ibn. Who is son of God do they say? Isa alayhi salam. They claim that he is the son of, son of God. So they changed 25th of December to the celebration of the birth of the son of God. And this became a common practice. And after 1647 is when you would start seeing lights in houses. And some practices are still here today, the Christmas tree, the lights. Why? Because it was a festival of light. Because the Romans celebrated that day because of the sun. And today the Christians have adopted the same ideology, but just changed one thing. And it has nothing to do with Christian, Christians. Nothing to do with Christians. This day, 25th of December. But now we are in this period, festive period, that they call Christmas. In two days, they are going to be celebrating. And many of us, I remember somebody messaging me on a Sunday, we're going to have a feast in our house. And we're going to have a feast in our house. Christmas. Many of some of them here are probably thinking the same, we're going to have a feast in our house on Christmas. Well, I, my brothers, you do not understand me. You making that day like a celebration or a happy occasion, you are also celebrating with them. And don't think you are celebrating the birth of Jesus. You are literally celebrating those who worship the God, those who worship the Son. This is what you are partaking in. So think, and this comes with every single festival that the West comes with. Understand where has it come from? What is the origins behind it? Has it come from something which began by shirk? And if it did, we have to refrain and stay away from it. It's not hard. It takes us 10 minutes to research something. But we, 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 we start to love something so much. Because this is only going to affect not our homes, but our children's future. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, we need to make our children, our youngsters, love Ramadan. When Ramadan comes, we should be doing activities. So they are eager for the next Ramadan. When Eid comes, take your children out on holidays. Go somewhere, do something. Don't make it a natural day where you just come in to pray in the morning, eating and then sit down and watch your TV all day, like a normal day. They will be more eager to wait for Christmas because they are seeing gifts. And they're seeing their friends and family or everyone happy. But when Eid comes, give gifts to one another. Make Eid your full festival. And this is how your children are then going to love our Islamic festival. And they won't care about Christmas and Easter and Halloween and stuff like that. Because <laughs> they'll be waiting for Eid and Ramadan. But when we are making an environment where we are allowing all this to come in, what do we expect our children to be like? And how do we expect their children to be like? Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them hidayah. But everything comes by tarbiyah. Comes by the parents bringing up their children. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us better Muslims. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from these festivals and rituals.